In this video, I'm going to show you how to unlock the power of legacy gradients, allowing you to have all the traditional film toning techniques applied digitally. So what's the question? Are you ready? It's Photoshop time, and you know the drill. Smack it, whack it, and crack a lack. Yes! That's awesome! What? So back in 2012, with the release of Photoshop CS6, Photoshop had previously hired a bunch of professional photographers to print and tone their images with all the traditional toning techniques like sepia, cyanotype, selenium, cobalt, and then they digitized them so that we as digital photographers could apply those same looks and moods to our images. Now, unfortunately, with the release of 2020, these have been hidden in something called legacy gradients. So let's go back to a regular image. We know that this is the gradient map icon. So I click it, I get a gradient map adjustment and I toggle open my gradient choices and I see that I have the basics, which is this one, right? Black to white foreground. Then I have the blues, purples. I have all of these, but I see nothing that says photographic toning. Definitely nothing that says legacy gradients. So if you have Photoshop experience, you know they hide things in gear icons or dialogue lines. So here's a gear icon. Toggle that open. I don't see anything here about appending or adding to my existing gradients. They've hidden it a bit better than normal. And here's how you find it. You go up to Window, go down to Gradients, put a check mark on it so we'll open it up, and you'll see all the gradient folders that we just saw right over here, right? Now here's the difference. Go to these dialog lines and all the way down to Legacy Gradients. Click it and, and it adds it into your folder. It'll also show up here now, right? And then toggle that open, scroll up. So these are all the legacy default gradients, which these are the crazy ones that nobody liked and always complained about. We have all these different variations of gradients, color harmonies, metals, noise samples, special effects. So investigate these on your own. But what I wanna show you are these photographic toning gradients. Check these out. These are all the selenium, sepia, antique, cobalt, all those custom gradients here for you to apply. So instead of manually coming back and clicking and reclicking, Julianne Cost, who is an Adobe evangelist and educator, so if you're interested in Photoshop and learning Photoshop, put her on your list of the top Photoshop instructors. The link to what I'm about to show you is on her blog. So follow that link to her blog, which has tons of useful, inspiring information. But once you go to her blog, following the link I've given in the description, you will download this document that she created. That is, it's so simple, but it's so powerful. Essentially, she created a, a duplicated smart object platform that's applying all of the gradients simultaneously, individually at 100%. So you, if you're thinking, oh, I really think I want to tone this, but I don't know what it would look like. Essentially, you just open this gradient. Now, if, if your first thought is like, okay, so I look at the gold too, and then I kind of come back over to this one, and then I, let me delete all this stuff, and then I come up to the gradient map and I, I toggle this open and I toggle legacy gradients and I'm then I toggle photographic toning and then I'm like and then I have to hover over these to figure out which one is the copper two. I think it's this one that would take forever, right? That's not what you want to do. Let me show you the magic that's about to happen. Essentially, you come to the very base image titled Lighthouse. Notice it's a smart object, which means you can double click on a smart object, which is essentially an image buried in an image. Notice that the format is square. That's because we can put a vertical or horizontal or a square image and it will still work. Right here, let me go over to Bridge, pull this down a touch just to quickly click and drag over to this image. So that automatically placed the image and fit it to the, the image size. Remember, whenever you double click to open up a smart object, which is kind of like Inception, a dream within a dream. So I have this image that's now on top of the previous image and it opened up as a .psb, which traditionally stands for Photoshop Big. This is extension you use if your Photoshop document becomes over two gigabytes. It is also used for smart object saving to give you the indication that you are now inside of a smart object. So I'm just gonna click the X icon and it's gonna prompt me, do you wanna save your changes? Cause I just drug this image into it. I'm gonna say yes. And when I do, it's gonna auto update every single smart object in that adjustment panel, showing me all of the settings. How amazing is that? Nice. So now you have the ability to quickly identify with a specific image. Ooh, I really love sepia four. And then you can apply this particular 
color toning gradient to all of those wedding images so they match identically, whether they're online or in print on a gallery wall. Now your next thought is, okay, well that's great, it works with square images, but what if I had a horizontal image? Well, double click back on the base smart object, which is titled Lighthouse, you can delete the one that was there, go back into bridge. Okay, here's a horizontal image. So how about I just drag that horizontal landscape image into this? Remember, it's going to automatically justify to fit to the, the longest dimension of the image you're applying. This is a horizontal image. This is how it would apply. You hit enter. And in order to not get this lighthouse to show up, just turn the lighthouse eyeball off. And then you're like, well, I don't want all this transparent stuff to show up. It's not gonna show up. Watch what happens. Again, I'm gonna X out of this .psb file. I'm gonna save the changes. And that transparent is gonna be transparent. So I just have paper white in my adjustment photographic toning grid. See what I mean? So now I can quickly say, hmm, I think I like Cobalt Iron 3 or even uh, Julian Cost Red Yellow. Looks really nice. Of course, I also like the Platinum and the Selenium. They look nice. So you have total control over what you apply. Now here's another way to apply it. Let's say you're taking a quick look, just for example, I really like the gold one. I have an image open in Photoshop, this owl. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold down the command or control key and I'm gonna click on gold two. This is going to auto select that image. See how it opened up the folder. It says it was in the row two folder, which we knew because this is, you know, obviously row two. And this is the image. If we're concerned that we did something wrong, just turn the eyeball on and off. You see it disappeared. Now notice the clipping mask right above it. That's the photographic toning gradient that has been clipped to this individual image. I can turn that on and off. Do you see how it's applying to that color image? Now watch this. I'm going to click on that gradient photographic tone and just drag it over to the tab of the image I want to apply it to that's already open. It's going to open that image. I'm gonna pull it down and it automatically applies. Now for me, I tend to like these photographic tones applied directly to a black and white conversion. So what I would do is I'd go back down the background layer and I'd just add a basic gradient map, you know, the black to the white, hit D for default colors to make sure your black is in your foreground and just add that and it, it typically adds a nice subtle change to what's going on. So again, go to that link, download this template, use it all the time. It is super helpful for a visual quick reference of what kind of tones you like. And then once you find your favorites and you are going to have just, you know, a few favorites, save them as actions and you'll find out how to create actions in other videos. Can't wait to see what you make. Take care. Hey, what are you still doing here? It's over. Actually, all kidding aside, I hope this video helped. And if it did, consider subscribing. I like subscribers. That's awesome. What? You just took one in the jugular, man. <laughs> Whoa. Yes! <laughs> oh. oh my god, I did. This is Hey, you stayed to the end. You know what that means. You're awesome. I'm talking about you. Now get out of here. <laughs>